All right, so y'all need to know the reason why we're doing this video is because my guest for Fridays with Friends backed out on me. I'm not going to say his name, Scotty Young, but <laughs> he backed out on me. And so this is actually something that, um, you know... And so I'll... we got stuck with me. <laughs> That's how he really feels about it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Uh, truth be told, I did, but, <laughs> but for seriously, this is something that really though, you can't say that I got stuck with you because we talked about doing this last week. Yes, we did. You know, and so, um, but I don't know if anybody remembers, but last Wednesday I talked about anger and what to do with anger. And if you, you say, well, I don't really remember that. Think about, um, you know, I, talk, I started talking about options. You know, if you're angry with someone or someone's angry with you, what do you do? And one of the options was, um, some of my friends comment on this personally. One of the options was you could just wait for them to die. <laughs> and it was just like, <clears throat> it's like spit your coffee out kind of a thing. Like, what? Uh, so I was talking about anger. I was talking about uh, Sermon on the Mount. And if you've been following these videos, that's... Uh, where I have been, I wouldn't say stuck at, that's not a good word, but that's where I've been at in the scripture. And I've just been soaking up Matthew 5, 6, and 7. I've really just been in Matthew 5. And um, there are a few verses in that uh, that talk about uh, dealing with anger. And, you know, Jesus specifically refers to murder. And, you know, the thought process was, okay, so you've heard, he said, you know, you... You've heard it's been said, don't murder. Okay. If you murder, you're going to be in danger of the judgment. So basically, if you murder, if you kill somebody, you probably, you, you're in danger of getting killed back. So, uh, and so I, I'm guessing they felt like as long as they didn't kill, that they were okay. But Jesus said, no, no, no. He said, um, well, that's probably good. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the scripture here said in Matthew 5. No. He said, You have heard it's been said by them of old time. Um, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And if y'all remember, I talked about that. Um, whoever is angry with your brother or without a cause, talked about what that was, and that was without a cause. That's actually just one word in the Greek, in the Greeks. And um, it's not the word hero, or gyro, however you like to pronounce that. But... Um, it's definitely hero. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but uh, it, anyway, it goes through here, and it talks about anger, and it says, you know, if you say... If you say to your brother, Reka, or in other words, if you're worthless, then you're in danger of the council. If you say, you're a fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. It's never good to, you know, just demean somebody's character and to tear them down in that way. All right, so this is uh, this is where I wanted to get uh, Valerie's perspective. And this is something that me and her have talked about, you know, um... Because there's a couple of there's a couple of different sections in Matthew in Matthew five that talk about dealing with anger and it says it says your adversary, okay, but you know an adversary could I guess genuinely be anyone, you know if your adversary you know we think I guess maybe an enemy would you say that that adversary could be anyone? I mean typically it means your enemy but if you are upset or angry with someone in that moment you feel like they are your adversary. Right. So I mean we we could you could feel like you know that you resent your spouse and that you are you know that they are your adversary. You could feel like that in the moment and many people do. And so that's what we're going to talk about in a minute but it says here's what let me just read what it says. It says agree with thine adversary quickly. Whiles thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. All right, that's in Matthew 5, uh, 20, Matthew 5, 25 and 26. 
Um, so basically the concept seems to be, all right, so if you are angry, if somebody is angry with you or you're angry with somebody, go, go deal with it. Go deal with it. And, you know, the verses actually that I left out uh, that really build up into this that I skipped over, it says, um, therefore, and this is what, this is the first part we were talking about. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there rememberest that thy brother hath ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way and be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. And this is where I'm going to ask your input. Okay. Um, you know, I've just kind of done some explaining on that, but how would you apply that, Valerie? And feel free to speak, speak openly. But how would you how would you apply that? Just generally, this is a, kind of a specific context. But how would you how would you apply that generally to a marriage? Like, let's say me and you, or a marriage. Just in general. You're talking about the portion where it says, you know, that you've brought your gift before the Lord, and yes. you realize you have ought in your heart. Yes. Okay, as far as a marriage is concerned, I feel like, I mean, op the obvious answer is, you know, if there is an issue between you and your spouse, then you are not ever going to have the relationship with Christ that you could potentially have mm -hmm. while you've got resentment, bitterness, anger, whatever going on between you and your spouse. Even, you know, problems that you say, well, it's just not worth arguing over but you know that it's causing you to harbor resentment in your heart towards them. Mm. Your relationship with Christ is not going to be right until you get those things right with your husband or your wife that you know are causing a problem. Do you think it's possible? Now, you, you said that. Do you think it's possible to be vertically right with God while not being right with a brother or somebody else or your, your marriage partner? You think it's possible? I'm of the opinion that a lot of things are possible. I know that's where you and I kind of disagree on some things, but I do think it's possible if, say for instance, I am harboring something against you. I am resentful or bitter or angry, but you don't know there's a problem because I haven't spoken up. I haven't said, I really hate it when you do whatever. I've just kept it to myself, and I am harboring that bitterness, but you don't know there's an issue. I'm just living wild and fancy free and living so my I life. So I think that your relationship with the Lord could be just fine. What mine would be hindered because I know there's a problem, and, and I'm there. not dealing that with it. That is there. Yes, you are because that is going to be a wedge in my spirit between me and you and between me and Christ until I deal with that. And would you say, too, that that's the way a lot of anger is? As far as bitterness, bitterness and resentment. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? You know yes. what I'm saying? It's just kind of low level and you feel like, well, it's not really worth fighting about. It's not really worth arguing over. But I am just kind of of the opinion that you can say anything if you say it well. I mean, obviously you don't want to go off on your spouse and yelling and screaming and having a fit. That's not saying it well. Yeah. And on the other flip side of that, neither is whining and pouting and being passive aggressive towards your spouse because they didn't give you what you wanted. Yeah. But if you have an honest, open, adult dialogue, then you can say what you need to say. And it may sting briefly, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even for a day or two if it's something that is a part of their character that you're sort of pinpointing and saying, I really dislike this. But if it's, you know, it's something that's not just a personality trait but it's actually part of their character that could hurt a little worse but I do think that you are able to overcome that as a couple if you are both you know you know you're both on the same team and you're both trying to live for Christ especially yeah. can I can I ask you <laughs> go ahead <laughs> can I, can I, um you know, I've I've been and you've you've seen a lot of my little videos, obviously. I watch them sometimes. Because you're a good wife. <laughs> but you know, and these are things that we've talked about and things that we've hashed out. And, and and I would say, what would you say? Probably in the last six months, is when me and you have really started to 
kind of un- not hash it out and fight it out. But we have really kind of started to understand understand each other better. Mm-hmm. You know, because of some things and some videos we've watched and, you know, and, you know, we found out that, you know, <laughs> one of us is more agreeable and one of us is not. I'm disagreeable, just, I'll admit it. <laughs> was it going to... Just say that. I don't think disagreeable is a bad it's thing. It's not though. a bad thing. But, it just means that. But I when don't... you say that, when you just throw that out, it seems like, well, you just. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. but I... some people may take that as, well, he just. So I didn't want to say that. I wanted you, and you just. You Dis- did. Disagreeable just simply means that I don't let people push their ideas and opinions on me. I have a pretty firm idea of what I what think. What you think and what you believe. And I and don't you're not have just any gonna, problems. You're not just going to chameleon around and just accept yeah. things. I don't have and any problems that, stating that I don't agree. what was that you said? I actually had forgotten about this. What, what, that, what was that you said before we got married? That you, you commented or posted or something on my post. My gushy post about you. You remember when I was talking about I gained this, I gained that. And you said something like, um, I said before we got married that I wasn't going to be the wife or... What yeah. was that? Before we ever got married, we were dating. And I just kind of purposed in my heart, and I told him this, that I did not want to be the kind of wife that just said, oh, do whatever you want to do. And then I'm, like, gossiping to my friend about, well, my husband did this, and that was just so stupid, and I don't know why he did that. And, like, there are times that I tell him, do whatever you want to do, but only if I genuinely mean it. Yeah. Because I don't want to say, oh, do whatever you want to do, and I have something else in my mind. And then when he doesn't do what I have in my mind, I think, well, that was dumb. Why did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> like, I want him to just it's know. Opening the door for resentment. I want him to know, this is what I think, you know, and then listen to what he thinks, which I think is also only fair. Listen to your spouse's opinion. And then the two of you together work out which direction you're going. Would you say that, well, I know, I know what you would say, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Would you say that that was one of the biggest for the the biggest sources of contention in our marriage for the first five or six years was because I you know where I'm going yes yes <laughs> I wanted to be worshipped just gonna say it no you wanted to do whatever you wanted to do and still be worshipped. <laughs> I, I wanted to do whatever I jolly well wanted to do. There. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the whole truth. <laughs> but, and so, and because, I mean, just honestly, I had seen that. Or at least that's what I thought I had seen from other successful marriages. <laughs> you know, where the woman just laid down and worshipped her husband and just did whatever her husband said, and even if he was verbally abusive, you know, she just did whatever. And I thought that's what I was going to get. He didn't know. I didn't. I had no idea. <laughs> Not a clue. But, and I'm, I say this with all honesty, I did not appreciate that for the first several years of marriage. I don't. But, there's two buts. <laughs> I really appreciate that now because I've kind of been on my own little faith journey or spiritual growth or I don't know what you'd call it, Nine Steps to Success by Tony Robbins. I don't know. But my wife has been instrumental in that and she has kind of pushed me out of my box. And so everything you see today Hmm. is because of my wife. Not all of it. He was a little crazy and eccentric yeah, before I, I got anywhere near him. Yeah. <laughs> but the rest of it, I'll take credit for. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I used to be really big into wearing for dress shoes because they don't preach your own dress sharp, you know. Whatever. I used to be really big into into wearing. The only type of shoes for me were square toed Stacy Adams dress shoes. Square toed Stacy Adams dress shoes. That's the only kind of shoes I would wear. And we were on our honeymoon, and I knew that I was in for something on our honeymoon because this was 12 years ago. Almost. Almost 12 years ago. Um, she, we went to a shoe store, just, you know, shopping around. And she 
got me to buy my first pair of anything other <laughs> than than Stacy Adams square toe. And I remembered they were like a brown leather Skechers like round toe. And I remember looking at them like, I like these. And you also only wore white dress shirts. Only. I was one of those Baptists. And white dress normally, shirts. Normally, like navy khaki black pants, very like yep. traditional color. Conservative. Cut. And now he's bright and colorful, crazy socks all the time. I feel like that was already your personality, though. You just didn't really know it. <laughs> Woo! I, I, w- I would agree with that, too. Um, so, there's, there's some wisdom to... The, there's some words of wisdom. Uh, find the most disagreeable person you can and marry them. That's not always Put a, a ring thing. on it. It's not always good. This has been difficult. Amen it that. has been difficult. And I think this is one of the main reasons I wanted to do this is because, you know, I've said it in texts and stuff and Facebook posts or whatever. But, man, I'm going to tell you, our marriage has been hard. And one of the reasons it has been difficult is because we hadn't really under... I mean, I, I can say it at least from my point of view, but I think it's both of us that... We hadn't really understand. We we didn't really understand how to communicate to each other. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't really know. I didn't know until a few years ago about the whole love languages thing or whatever, and know how. And by the way, if if you're married out there, I would encourage you to read the Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Just go ahead and buy it. Get it on audiobook. Would you agree with that? Yes, it's a good one. Very good. Very helpful. You need to read that. If you read any book about marriage, read that one. But you know. I mean, we've also kind of come to understand, you know, that we are on the scale of agreeable and disagreeableness. We are just like total opposites, complete polar opposites. We're polar opposites in just about in just every about way. every everything, and so that's proved very difficult, uh, very difficult. But now that we understand that, you know, what we've been able to do, and this is what has strengthened our marriage is that we've been able to find the commonalities. Would you say that? I don't know where you're going. Oh, you don't know my track. Finish the sentence. <laughs> you're supposed to be able to read my mind. But you can't. So you still got a long way to go, Valerie. <laughs> but now I don't remember the track of my mind. Found the commonalities. Found the commonalities. And then we try to do our best to focus on those commonalities and like, you know, I won't I'm just gonna say, like would you like to just say what, you know, kind of our our common ground is that we are able to dialogue about or whatever? We are both communicators. We both like to talk and talk in different ways. Like beyond just the shallow, how was your day? You know, what did you do? How were the kids? Uh, beyond that stuff, we like to talk deeply about things. And so scripture has really probably been the biggest common ground for us. Because I am, I like to think theoretically about things, and he just gets like glassy eyed when I get there. So <laughs> we have to talk. We talk about the Bible a lot, um, about you know things of God, and we run it by each and, other. You know, just like maybe what the Lord is speaking to us about, and I'll run it by him and say, "Hey, this is what the Lord's speaking to me about. This is the portion of Scripture I'm reading. What do you think about this? What's your take on it?" And I like that a lot of times his perspective, because we are so different. His perspective is still very different than mine. And while we probably would agree on, you know, 90, 95% of what we read, that 5%, just that little bit of difference really adds a lot of clarity sometimes to even what I'm thinking, just being able to listen and hear a different perspective on it. I was going to use the word sharpens. Sharpens, that's a good word. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the counsel of his wife. I think that's how it goes but no um but that's that's the probably the concrete area and if you are married out there and you are finding it's just like impossible to get along with your spouse look for the commonalities would you say that that's just advice right there just yes. 
Look, look for a common area. Stop focusing on all the areas you are different, even if you are completely polar opposites. You probably have an area, or maybe one or two or three, and focus in on that. And I think it's okay, too, to, to recognize your differences. Like, for instance, Josh is extremely extroverted. Like, not just an extrovert, like an extreme extrovert. Like, I have to have it to survive. And like to the point that he was home with us all day on Labor Day and did not go out of the house and he was cranky by about seven o'clock. Like we had to get out of the house and go and do something because he needed his people fix. <laughs> Whereas I am on the other end, I am an extreme intro introvert. I could stay home all day with just me and my family and my kids and be perfectly happy. Not ever see anyone and it wouldn't bother me at all. Um, but you know, because I have realized I'm an introvert, he's an extrovert, then come Labor Day at 5 o'clock when he's starting to get cranky and irritable, I can say, you know what, we need to get out of the house for a little while. And because we I know can, that now. I can bend a little bit. And even though I would rather stay at home, I can say, hey, let's go walk through Walmart. Let's go out to eat. Let's go and do something and allow him to get his people oh, fit. Yes! Rather than me being upset and like, well, he just doesn't want to spend time with me. He doesn't love me and he doesn't like doesn't being around me. me and... Does he love me and does he not? <laughs> you know, so I think even recognizing your differences can be a good thing if you can logically consider how your spouse is feeling about something. You know, the way that you feel is not the only reality. That doesn't mean that what you're feeling isn't valid, but just because you feel that way doesn't mean your spouse does. Hmm. And so it, I think it's only fair to take their feelings into account as well. Hmm. Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. 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 He does that a lot. But seriously though, we just kind of wanted to open our little home up to you, open up our little marriage to you and just tell you that, you know, I know that I post on Facebook a lot and I include my wife in on a lot of those posts. But um, He always makes me sound really good, by the way. Like, I feel like he focuses on the like really nice areas. There are a lot of... Not unfairly though. Yeah. I may be a little generous, but it's not unfair. I mean, I would agree with that. I think I'm pretty yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Just kidding. She got jokes, folks. <laughs> but he does really zone in on the good stuff. In reality, there's about 20 times that much bad that he just kind of leaves off. And no. Is gracious enough to not mention. <laughs> no. Um, but I, I just wanted to let y'all in on that and just... Let you in on, on our marriage. You know, we seriously, and I, I'm not, I am not joking here. For the first five or six years, it was, it may have looked okay from the outside, but it was not. It was not. And uh, maybe we'll share some more on, I don't know, like we're really thinking about doing it like a podcast type thing here in the future, but um, maybe we'll share some more in the future on that. But for now, we just want to let you in on that and to let you know that. You know, man, our marriage, if, if it looks good on social media, that is just the job of social media because it has not been perfect. And we still struggle today. Would you say that? Absolutely. And, you know, just just for the simple fact that we are on just completely opposite ends of the personality spectrum and everything else, it's going to be hard, like forever. Forever. Would you agree? I agree. I mean, it, it's going to be hard, but I mean, here we are almost 12 years still together <laughs> and and it is a lot would you agree with that a lot better a yes. lot better than it was we're making before. we're making a lot of good progress making a lot of progress uh, mostly because of me that's right all because of I like to steal the shot <laughs> he still likes to be worshipped <laughs> my foot my foot ah uh. You can't never. I've got gout, and she was sending me a subliminal message, and it hurt like the Dickens. That doesn't even really mean. Ah! <laughs> My bad. Uh. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my little iPad. Can you hear my iPad? I'm gonna throw you through a lightning round. Throw me through a lightning yeah, round? Yeah, throw you through a lightning round. You told me you weren't gonna do this to me. You lied. You lied. Gotta have. Now I'm nervous. Gotta have music. I like the music, music, music. You're so weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
a lot to music. <laughs> uh. All right. Okay. Okay. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite meal? Mexican of any kind. But what kind? What's your favorite meal at a Mexican place? Mm, tacos. Favorite place to visit? Texas. Texas. What is your favorite thing about Texas? It's just home. Like, it just, everything there feels like home. It's what I grew up with. It's what I'm comfortable with. Who's your favorite preacher? You. Oh, ho, ho! <laughs> oh, ho, ho! <laughs> if you had, if somebody gave you a million dollars and you couldn't give it to charity, what would be the first thing you purchased? A house. I would, I would pay our house off. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> who is your favorite child? I don't have a favorite child. I love both my babies. Okay. Maybe I should say my husband. I'm a baby. You are my favorite I'm child. Big baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, who's your favorite present? <laughs> Run around Steve. Run around Steve. Um, trying to think of what I asked the other guys. Um, do you love Jesus? Yeah. Does he love you? I don't think so. Most days. Okay. Um, if you, okay, tell me this. If you had, if, if money was no option, where is, where would be your dream destination? Money was no option. Ireland. Ireland. Go to Dublin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would really just like to backpack everywhere. Like, I think that backpack would be Backpack all over the place. What would be your What would be your dream uh, profession if you had one? You're raising children now, but what would be your dream profession? I really enjoyed teaching while I was teaching, but I think if I had like my absolute dream job, I always wanted to be an orthodontist. I don't know why. Go ahead and smile. She has great teeth. <laughs> All right, that's time's up. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Thank you, Valerie Westmoreland, for being my guest, and we'll see you next time. We'll be back hopefully on Monday. See you next time. Bye. Bye.